Hello guys, welcome back to Not Just Mecha, it's Marco here, and today I work on the second warband of the new Warcry box set, The Science of the Flame. Last week's project was all about shadows and smoothness, used to create the feel of deadly elven assassins, Well, this week we'll focus on light, fire and the illusion of movement, using roughness and painterly brushstrokes to catch the artwork's mood and energy. While painting, I always have on the table a set of reference pictures and artworks to guide me towards the final look I want. It can be a general mood board with a widespread of visual information, or like in this case, just a couple of pictures of which I want to capture the essence. Working from 2D artworks and in a speed painting context, you have to distill just the two, three main elements that make the picture work. This mindset puts the focus in the right places and keeps the work fast, in this case a little more than three hours from start to finish. Light is the main protagonist here, with a soft source in the volcanic bases that illuminates the figures from below, and stronger light sources in the flames from weapons and spells. Fire generates a very specific kind of light, with a lot of energy, movement and contrast, that works with the nervous and rough general finish to create the illusion of that constant motion. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to always know what happens on the channel, and if you want to help and support my work, check my Patreon page and join the community! You know that I like my gaming stuff to be indestructible, so here is a quick and easy approach to make cool and super tough lava bases. A realistic volcanic ground is very regular, and in general I hate to see a flat base that kills immediately the suspension of disbelief, so I start applying a generous coat of AK Interactive wet ground. This product is made to simulate a thick, fresh mud, but it's also perfect to create the dense volume of magma. It has its own binder inside, so you don't need anything else to have a perfect bond with the plastic. Look to this beautiful texture. By the way, you can do something similar using a paste made with PVA glue and fine sand. The important part of the trick is just to create natural, irregular volumes and movement. Now I can paint the magma effect, starting with a coat of white, to establish an extreme light value. Followed by yellow ink to create a powerful, vibrant saturation. I want to keep the light source in the center, so I add colors only on the outer rim of the bases. I close the effect with a gradient of orange and red. They are cool just like this. Here is an essential trick that will make the next special effect work a thousand times better. I cover my bases with a thick coat of PVA glue and I let it dry. I'll explain the benefits of this layer while doing the next step. For a cracking earth effect on gaming bases, I usually use one of these two products. GW Mordant Earth has the benefit to be already in a dark black, but if I have more time, I prefer the size and the scale of the cracks made by the AK Interactive paste, that's also much cheaper. I apply a very thick coat of the crackle effect. Don't be shy with this application, because in order to shrink and crack, it will lose almost all its volume. The layer of PVA glue has two functions. It binds with the crackle paste, adding strength and structure from below, and more important, it will add its own shrinkage to the general effect, making the cracks larger and more uniform. The heat from the blow dryer puts everything in motion. Don't let the bases simply dry at room temperature. You need a good punch of heat to make the layers seriously move. To close the work and make everything indestructible, I use my usual two-step combination of wet water and diluted PVA, applied in a thin layer with a brush. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check the video up here for all the details about my indestructible gaming base. Time to move to the models, that I've already pinned and primed in black. In this project, the value sketch is probably the most important step, the foundation on top of which I'll build all the next layers. I use white ink to establish an eye contrast genital light, <laughs> but you can simply use a spray can. All the credits for the term genital light goes to Roman Lappat from Massive Voodoo. I love to use this definition because it explains beautifully the whole process in a single word. Having the models without their bases really helps to establish the perfect extreme angle from below. 
When I have a general grayscale, I push more the intensity and opacity of the white on the numerous flames, spraying a couple of extra layers in those spots. Here is the final effect, with these strong, interesting shadows on everything facing up. One of the key components of the artwork is its nervous and rough general sensation, so in this phase I don't use the airbrush, to avoid the super smooth finish of its layers. I use few earthy colors from the Chimera set to mix my basic skin tones. You can find much, much more about this topic in this video up here. And I add a good amount of glaze medium and a bit of water to create a dense, heavy body wash. I apply this mix with a big brush and generous loose brush strokes, letting the underpainting and the transparent paint to do their job in expressing the volumes and their natural gradients. This approach is extremely forgiving and easy to modulate and control, making this step quick and totally stress-free. I was so into the flow that I forgot to put the models on their bases. You can't trust the glue on gaming models, so here is what I do. I drill a hole in the base, add some super glue under the feet, and I place the model in position with its long pin that I bend under the base, literally clipping the figure together with the base. I make this bond eternal, gluing the pin to the bottom with a good dose of super glue and activator. I continue setting the basic tones of the scheme using thick washes made with matte paint, glaze medium and water. The time for this kind of applications is measured in seconds, and two coats are enough to obtain this beautiful result that lets you see in transparency the volume set by the value sketch, creating at the same time this matte and grainy sensation of soft and realistic materials. Plus, I don't need much saturation here because uh, that will be added later with the color light from the fires. Same process for the bluish tone of the lizard skins of the capes. Here I put color theory at work to build a solid ground for a cool speed painting trick that will reveal itself in the next stages. I mix my color starting from a pool of cold green, and, this is essential, I keep the turquoise on the very edge of turning into green. The only exception on the palette is made by Vallejo Game Inc. Skin Wash, that I use straight from the bottle and in a single application to base the burnished armors. Ironically, this color is really bad to paint skins, but great to paint old, unpolished bronze or leather. To do this job, you can use a variety of paints. This is one of those cases where I simply personally like a tool. Here you can see the four tones on the palette used to set in place the basic use of the scheme. You can clearly see how the load of visual information of this intermediate stage is naturally greater than the sum of its parts. Before moving to flames and lights, I add a few touches of metallic paint using a simple mid-value silver and bronze. I use a rough brush strokes, stippling and rubbing the side of the brush on the details, to set a subtle physical texture of cast or wrought iron. I use yellow ink to base the flames. Here I switch to the airbrush because I want to produce a quick smoothness for the fire and its light. I use the airbrush just for speed, and you can totally create the same effect using the brush. Check this video up here, where I do exactly the same using only overlapping filters and glazes with the brush. In the first stage I simply color the flames. I'm not really worried about the diffusion of their light, but I still let a bit of overspray to move around to start establishing their glow. I always think the light as a bubble centered around its source. This helps me to visualize the vectors coming out from the source and the tangent points on the model. Again, check this video up here for a full, super detailed explanation of this topic. With the same yellow, I establish the general tone of the bouncing light. The information of light and value is contained in the black and white sketch of the first step. Now I need only to give it a color sensation.
Here is the trick I mentioned painting the blue skins. Look what happens when a transparent yellow hits the cold turquoise. It turns green by itself. Working with uh, transparent layers you can do a lot of tricks like this one, where the colors optically mix together thanks to their overlapping. Also, notice how the yellow filter tints the white shown in the transparency left by the previous washes, creating all the missing saturation in a single step. In the fading edges of the light, this is an overlapped layer that uh, simply influences the basic colors of the materials, but in the lightest points it's still acting on the white of the first step. This is how you really save time. I continue the transition on the flames with a transparent red. At this point the flames are very cartoony, so here is a little trick before adding the extreme final shadow with black. I use Bart Amber to create a more gentle transition to black and its warm, transparent, brownish over spray will tone down the bright flames, bringing everything into a more realistic palette. The color brown contains all the other tones, so it's always a great tool to desaturate powerful colors in a very natural way. If you are not conscious about this aspect, that's the reason why people love and use uh, Agrax Earthshade so much. And black for the smoky, dark end of the flames. I put a light glove to show you how to handle these details with the airbrush. You can't avoid overspray, and if you want to improve, you have to accept it as an integral part of the tool, but you can use it like in the flames glow, or work around it. I don't tame to the detail, but I center the spray a few millimeters away, so I paint this little element using the radius of the circle, getting also a perfect blend from its fading circumference. I move again to the wet palette to paint the highlights and the sharp leaving reflections of the flames, using just the most obvious tones. Everything is inside the powerful yellow light projected by the fire, so I use the same gradient of yellow tones to highlight with highly opaque brush strokes every material, even weapons and metal elements. I don't use the usual sharp lines to underline details and edges, but irregular and wavy movements that synthesize better the idea of moving fire. I add also little dots and lines to create a sensation of cinematic, floating, burning ash, a classic comic and manga trick to create movement on a static medium. And here is the final result. Three hours of simple, visceral, pure fun, spent painting some of my favorite things. Flames, crazy lights, big weapons and muscle barbarians. Working with the reference artwork is always the best thing you can do if you want to improve your painting. In a speed painting context is a great way to have a reliable map to follow and a clear final look to pursue, literally in front of your eyes. All the answers to your questions and doubts are in that picture, and in the very first level of visual information that arrives to your eyes. And it's even more useful if you're aiming to advance painting, because uh, retroengineering what you see you can absorb years of someone else's art training that you can easily shift into your work. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. Remember that you can ask me anything down below with a comment and you can follow my projects during the week using one of my socials. And if you want to support the channel and my work, check my Patreon page and join the community or maybe ask for a commission. See you next week, guys.